One of the crucial parts of flying an aircraft is programming the flight plan inside the aircraft, at least inside the FMC or MCDU or whatever it's called, right, into the system of the aircraft. In this video, we're going to look at this one specifically, right? It's a Saab aircraft, which is by default part of Flight Simulator 2024, but it has some issues with programming the flight. So let's jump into the cockpit, but first, let's roll the intro. So we're in the cockpit and I already started the aircraft partially, right? Because we need to program the flight into the uh, computer, which is over here, right? You can easily exit by pressing shift and the number six, which will bring you over. And that's where you will see something funny because it says, okay, the database expires on the 3rd of November, 2022, while the actual date is already the 6th of April, 2025. So I'm gonna press okay, and then we should be, I would say, good to go. The flight plan can be found in the FPL option. So the FPL option by default only contains the departing airport. It doesn't contain the destination airport. And also it doesn't contain any uh, standard instrumental departure. It doesn't contain any approaches. It doesn't contain any destinations. So be aware of that. However, you can add that, right? So let's first make sure that we are configuring the departing airport correctly because currently it has only been sent to the airport to do that we're going to use the uh, EFB and inside the EFB we've got the flight already programmed right even if you would press send and then send to avionics it likely won't work because for some reason the SAP has I would say kind of a quirk in it where it doesn't work so that's why I record this video it, the interface you have might look a little bit different because I'm using sim update number two beta to would say uh, test some things out. So what do we know? In this case, we know that we're going to depart from runway number two. So how do we change the runway? Well, if you go to menu, you can press the uh, depart option. And in the depart option, you will have these nice options, right? Where you can see the runway. You can see that they also have numbers in front of it. Number one, number two, number two, one. If we, if I add it here, it will make sure that the runway is set to the departing runway number two. If I set it to number two, then it will be runway number 20. In this case, number one, I press number one and then I hit the enter key. Enter key is critical because if you don't do that, it won't do it. As you can see, I can configure a stand instrument departure, right? Which is normally uh, shown below the departure procedure, but I don't have any. So if I now press FPL, you can see that it has been updated to runway number two. Now, the next thing is that I want to set up the destination. So if I scroll down, I can see that this is the destination. So I press the menu option again, and then I select arrive. In the arrive, you will see that by default it selects the runway, but if you want to uh, add the, I would say, arrival airport, you press the arrive button, which will make this one uh, completely white, and then press the options, uh, or the letters in this case, go like Mike Hotel, and then hit the enter key. It will show you some information about the, uh, let's say, uh, destination, in this case, uh, Dakla, which I would say kind of is home sent correct. So I press accept. And then I will have the same options again. Number one is runway number three, which is the one we need. So press one, then hit enter. Then I don't have any uh, standard ter terminal arrival routes. So I'll skip that part. So I press the approach one, which will automatically populate the approaches. In this case, I want to use uh, ILS3Z from Zulu. So I'll press number two and then hit enter again. And if I do that, you can see that it will ask me to put in, I would say, kind of the starting point of the approach, right? In this case, I'm flying direct, so I won't add any transition. There are transitions available, but it's not in my flight plan. If you want to add it, you can press the change option over here and then add the required, I would say, approach. For now, it's okay, so I press FPL, and there you will see that it now has been set to runway number two, which is departure runway from this airport, right? Which is in this case, let me scroll to the top. Uh, is uh, Nabidu, not sure if pronounced correctly. Then I will uh, say fly, 
come to ILS3 Zulu and then I'll arrive at the airport, runway number three. To navigate to these pages, you can press the next option to go to the next page uh, and then also next again, right? If you want, and if you hit previous previous, you will see that it now has let's say, uh, gone two pages back. So what we need to do now is we need to add the en route waypoints. And to do that, we're going to press the no link, which is currently uh, marked as pink because that's the uh, let's say, connection point between runway number two and our approach. And when selecting it, you've got a multiple options. You can either add delete, but in our case, we are going to enter the waypoints. And here comes something really critical. You need to start at the bottom and then work your way upwards, else it won't do it correctly. Right? So in this case, I need to start with uh, Las Up. And if I do that, I can press enter and then it will ask for confirmation. I'll say OK, go ahead. You can see that LASAP is now above null link. Now, if I want to add a waypoint above uh, LASAP, I can still do that because I need to add LOLOS. So I'm going to add LOLOS. Don't be worried that you're overriding it because you're not overriding it. It will again ask me for confirmation. And now you can see that it both has added Lolos and Lasap to my flight plan. If I want to get some more information, I can select the waypoint and that will show me some more information. Right, I can press return. I can uh, press this one and then press info and I will get the information from that one. And that's how you can say kind of navigate to your flight plan. If you want to remove this no link, you can also do it. Although I do think it's best practice to leave it in because you don't want to fly on the autopilot once you're approaching ILS uh, 3Z, which is the approach. But if you want to remove it, you can press it and then say delete and then delete again, which will remove it. And now uh, I would say it directly is connected, right? In the fly plan itself, there are altitude restrictions. Normally, you won't need to change anything, but if you would like to change anything, you can press this button and then add the, I would say, altitude restrictions if they are applicable. Again, normally you won't need to do that because we'll do it automatically, but hey, just for your information. Now, if you completely screwed up your fly plan, like I did already several times, there's also always a way out and that's by pressing the menu option and then hit the delete FPL. As soon as you hit the delete FPL, it will completely erase the flight plan, including the departure, right? So if I would press it again, now go back to FPL, you can see that I can't even press the FPL option because it doesn't have a flight plan. So I need to start from scratch again. Luckily, it remem remembers my, I would say, departing airport, right? So I can uh, select the options over here. And then once you've done that, it, for some reason, has recovered the complete flight plan. It could be due to the beta because I did test this before and it worked uh, in some cases, not in all cases. So be aware that erasing the flight plan, you could use the button. But if the button doesn't, doesn't work, there's, of course, the other option. And the other option is by simply selecting the uh, waypoint and then pressing delete and then do that for each single item in the list which will completely erase the flight plan not the easiest way but hey it's a workaround for now here ends the video where we looked at how to program the flight in this nas in this nice sap uh, 30 in this nice sap 340 uh, there are some workarounds which you need to apply but hey it still is workable and once programmed it will follow the flight plan really easy if you're switching on the autopilot of course hope you like this video if you like to see more of these videos then hit the like button because that makes me aware that you like this video and i need to post more of these videos if you've got specific questions about the sap 330 also let me know by leaving a comment below this video in the comment box and i will have a look at it and will answer your question as soon as possible thanks for watching and hope to see you back next time